Good afternoon, everyone, from Dunrobin Ranch in Lola, Montana. As you can see, the donkeys are here with us, or as you can hear. And we're going to do something really unusual today because we wanted to demonstrate to all of you the importance of having a hierarchy in the horses. They naturally have a hierarchy. They have a pecking order, much like people do. And there's, there are good reasons for it. In the wild, the horses want to know which horse they can depend on to be vulnerable to predators and to lead the way. So it's really about vulnerability. Uh, before we move on, I would like to acknowledge something that happened this morning. We lost one of our dear friends and dear horses, Mickey, who was with us for nearly 20 years. He was 21. He died very suddenly, and it was a very really traumatic event this morning. Uh, I'm going to refer back to Mickey at the end of this, in part because Mickey, uh, we always used Mickey in this exercise. This is an exercise that we have used many times with uh, leadership groups for Montana uh, well, Chamber of Commerce, for the University of Montana, etc. And, you know, horses are so big and it's so visual who is vying for what, that uh, it really depicts what happens in, when people are milling around looking for somebody to lead. It, you, you can't escape it with the horses. So here's the thing to do. James, if you wouldn't mind taking the camera and scanning the horses, and you will see that we have six horses, each sporting a different color. We have Butte is in blue. It's a black horse, or, well, pardon me, green is a black horse with green around his neck and on his halter and on his tail. Monty is over here kind of in front of me and he has blue on his tail and on his neck and on his halter. Whiskey is sporting white and you, again on his tail and on his neck and on his halter. And then we have Rocket Man, who is the, the orange guy today. He kind of goes with his orange colored coat. I can't see him right now, mm -hmm. but he's wearing orange. And then we have Flynn, who is wearing yellow, again around his neck, halter, and tail. And the last one is Mystery with a bright colored pink. He's a black horse here, and he's kind of in the middle. I can see him here. Now, everybody has to participate for us to be able to rank order these horses. And remember, a horse that is dominant over another horse will make that horse move. So what we have here are six horses that are ready for lunch. And we are going to feed them one flake at a time and they are gonna be competing for that one flake, all right? So by watching which horse moves which horse, and watching which horse your horse is moved by, we can determine the herd hierarchy. So Anya and Ashley, and this by the way is a wonderful intern, Alana, Ashley and Anya, uh, made this great little score sheet and you can do this at home. So um, Ashley, tell us which horse you're taking. My money is on Flynn, he's the underdog and I love him so much, and I know he gets pushed around, and I just kind of want everyone to see you can be the underdog, but that doesn't mean you're not gonna get lunch at the end of the day. And he's yellow. And he's yellow. Okay, so the scoreboard is, she's got her yellow up here, and when she sees a horse move her horse, she's going to ask Alana to put a check over here, mm -hmm. moved by. So, if Whiskey moves Flynn, Whiskey is white, she will put a check over here. If Flynn moves a, a different horse, let's say Mystery, for example, and Mystery is pink, then she would put a check, in this, a check in this other column. In other words, Flynn moved that other horse. So your job is to pick a color, any color, and get out a slip of paper and have two columns. The, the color of the, of the horses that your horse moves and the color of the horses that are moved by your horse. Remember, if your horse is moved by another horse, that means that your horse is submissive to that horse. If your horse moves another horse, that means your horse is dominant to that other horse. And by watching all of these interactions, you can determine which of these six horses is the top dog, okay? Mm -hmm. And again, this is really just meant to demonstrate how these horses really know their place. And, 
And we've done this so many times, you're not gonna probably see another horse bite another horse or even kick another horse. All they'll do is snake their, their head out, put their ears back and show their teeth. Or maybe show their rump like, move or I will kick you. They know each other, they, they treat each other fairly well most of the time. But knowing the herd hierarchy is extremely important yeah, in a, at a guest ranch, and I'll talk with both Anya and Ashley about that afterwards, why it, why it is so important. So, so, we have six hungry horses, all with colors, and Anya is going to do the uh, honors, and she's going to go and put a single flake of hay in the arena. And all of the horses are going to be interested in this flake of hay. And you'll see that by their behavior, that there's also displaced activity. Even though a horse may know it's not gonna get to eat off of that hay, there's no sense not picking on somebody else. And again, these kinds of behaviors are things that you often see in people as well. And that's one of the reasons we do this in leadership training is because it's just so obvious in horses which what can be less obvious with people. So let's wait for Anya. She's gonna put a, a single flake of hay in the middle of the uh, arena. And Alana and Ashley are gonna keep score here, okay? And all of you can keep score at home. All right, she's getting some interest from the horses. A single flake, okay. Now, what's gonna happen here? Now, I want you to look at who that horse is. Hmm. Okay, there's a telltale sign. A horse moved that horse off of the hay. So let's make sure we keep track of what horse moved what horse. Okay. So, now other horses are coming mountain. in to see if they can't get some of that hay. So again, keep good track of your horse, whether your horse is um, one of these five that are milling around or we have a horse in the corner, Mr. Flynn, yellow, is in the corner watching it all happen. Flynn, I have seen him bully some other lower on the totem pole horses, like Dugan, he'll bully Augie. He will not mess with these guys. <laughs> <laughs> he knows better than that. Okay, so what's happened here is you can clearly tell that that Monty, Mr. Blue, is quite content to be the only horse he eating. Also got moved so what does that tell you about these horses? Monty moved, he certainly kept Flynn away, even though he didn't move him, he kept him away. And he kept all of the other horses away, all right? So let's go and add another flake of hay and see what round two brings us. Flynn is just over here in the corner staring at the bucket of hay that we used to entice them to get them hungry. <laughs> yes. He's like, can I just please have some okay, of that? Okay, now we're going to see. So I don't have to deal with this? <laughs> so Rocket's sneaking up on Monty. He's like thinking out of the corner of his eye. Hmm, maybe sneaking I can get up, a bite. and Whiskey is too. Okay, Flake two. Who's Whiskey's got his ears back. Flake pushed away two. Rocket. This makes sense, Monty, Monty and Whiskey. Now you notice Monty didn't move. He's content to mm -hmm. eat flake number one. Yeah. So now they know the hay's coming from that end. Come on over here. Anya, and let's, let's fool them and bring one in from this end. Wait, now, now we let's, can use them from this end. Let's fool them and bring one in from this end, just to get oh, them I stirred yeah. up. <laughs> Flynn is like, me first. Me first. Me first. Yeah. Flynn's looking at it thinking, oh boy, this, this is on my me. side of the arena. I should have an opportunity here. But he doesn't even try. No. Look at that. So now look at what Whiskey's doing. This is really interesting. Whiskey left his hay. He had hay to eat, 
But did he stay there? No. no. He went to take the third flake of hay to move mystery off of it. Okay, so who's coming in for flake two now? Rocket. Rocket. So Whiskey took flake two, but then abandoned it for flake three. Always got to have the freshest stuff. The freshest stuff. <laughs> what does that tell you about Whiskey, though? He's a very competitive you? kind of horse. It, it means he wants to be higher in the herd than he is. Mm -hmm. He's, he, he, this is not just about eating to him. This is about exerting his, his influence. He's going to go back and, and move Flynn. Yeah, so Flynn didn't really move anybody. He just saw his window of yeah, opportunity, so now, but he's about to get so moved now by Mystery Whiskey here. wants to see if he can so move Mystery, Rocket So Mystery, the pink see? horse, just moved Flynn. Yep. Whiskey went over and moved Rocket. Yep. And let's see what happens here with Rocket and Mystery. Yep. Oh, it looks like this time around Rocket moved Mystery. I haven't yep. seen go both ways with the pink and the orange horse. Well, the, see, the see. interesting thing is when you have a horse that wants to be high on the hog, He's like a lot of people, Whiskey. Mm -hmm. He's really more interested in his position than he is in his job, mm -hmm. which is eating, in this case. Whereas the real leader just stays there and eats. He's, you know, he's, it's about mm -hmm. eating for Monty, mm -hmm. but it's not for Whiskey. It's about exerting his um, dominance. Okay, why don't you go back over to the other one then again, This you? one? I'm gonna keep you running today. <laughs> I could, I could lose the calories, it's fine. <laughs> now, the thing that's gonna be interesting here is if Whiskey abandons again. Will Whiskey abandon to move? And we're, we're really down to only, uh, where is the third horse? Oh. There's Butte over there in the corner. Butte's over there in the corner. Flynn is One in the other corner. corner. Flynn's in the other corner. Mystery just doesn't know okay, what Okay, now himself. Butte's thinking, good, I'm going to have it right here where I need it. All right. There's now, been times where I've been feeding the herd and Whiskey will follow me around with the cart the whole time. So he knows he's the only one that gets the first piece. Okay, now Monty is saying this, I've already eaten part of mine. Watch Whiskey move off to Monty's old pile. Yeah. Now Whiskey's going to take over where Monty was. Mystery just and took over the opportunity. And finally, Mystery gets to eat. <laughs> oh, poor Flynn. But Flynn's. Butte and Flynn still aren't even trying. The interesting thing is, is Butte is anxious and Flynn is not. I mean, Butte is pr uh, uh, prancing around here, looking around, seeing, could I get close to somebody? And Monty's gonna say, no, you get <laughs> out of here. You are way beneath me. Monty you, had nothing to do with that flake. The that's two right. boys were figuring it out, yet right? he mm -hmm. said, nope, this is mine now. Yeah. Yeah, Butte the green horse moved Mystery the pink horse, and Mystery was resistant to it. He tried to pin his ears and let him know this is my hay, but it didn't quite pan out. And then Monty came in and took it from both of them. And you can see Monty gets anything he wants. Mm -hmm. He moves from flake to flake. And Butte and Mystery are on a pretty similar playing mm -hmm. field. I've seen them eat together. I've seen them hang out. Butte just pointed his butt at Mystery. They're both cautious. Mm -hmm. They're both insecure about where they are in the herd. They're, they're moving up, but they're not secure yet in where they are. Okay, let's add another flake. Do you are have a preference of where five? I should put it? Is uh, this the fifth flake? Yep. Yeah, I think it's the fifth, not the sixth. Should I put it between Butte and Rocket yeah. to see what mm -hmm. happens over there? Yeah. Flynn thinks this is his chance. For me, please. <laughs> but look at Mystery's moving right in. Mm -hmm. Mom, where are you going? That's for me, right? Whiskey just moved again. And Whiskey's going to go over and check out the newest hay. So Whiskey just moved Mystery and moved Butte. Yep. Got to have the freshest stuff. And it's interesting that there is another flake behind Monty, but it's just too close to Monty that nobody else quite has the courage. Oh, and Butte's gonna try it. 
So Butte's going for it. See, Monty's looking at him. Monty's not pleased. Yeah. But he let him have it. And that's like you said, Suzanne, Monty's more concerned with his job of eating than asserting his dominance over Butte. Yeah, not always, but he sure didn't like Butte coming in on that other one. Mm -hmm. It's really interesting. He just wants Butte to know, hey, yeah. I'm watching you. I'm the man here. Take it mm -hmm. easy. Take it, yep. So now we've got Rocket coming in and moving Butte. Rocket Orange. is like a, a calmly dominant horse. He will put his ears back, he'll bite other horses when he needs to. Oh, he's a pretty easygoing guy the rest of the time. Yeah. Whiskey's coming around and pushing everybody. He pushed Mystery and Butte. He didn't really push Mystery. He walked by him and Mystery got nervous, so Mystery backed away from the flake, but came right back to it when Whiskey kept going. Okay, now I want you to go in with the sixth flake, and I want you purposely to put it near Flynn. And let's see if everybody allows Flynn to have a flake. This is, a, this is an interesting thing because he's so low on the totem pole, he's not even challenging anybody. And I've That's seen, yellow. I've seen times where I feed them and there's plenty of hay out there. Flynn will go to some hay and another horse will come by and just push him around anyways. And hopefully our viewers can see this yep. here this close. Yep. But... The Mystery, the pink horse, did not even allow Flynn a bite. Already went in and pushed him away from it. Right. And Flynn, the yellow horse, isn't even trying to go for the abandoned flake because it's in the middle of the herd, and that's just that's too intimidating for him because that's a danger zone. There are too many horses that might too many be aggressive horses to him. around that flake of hay, so he's not going to go for it. And Mystery certainly doesn't want to hang out in the middle over there, so he wants to get this new one. Right. So everybody's eating but Flynn. Mm -hmm. Let's put another hay, let's put as many flakes in as we need to until Flynn has a flake. What's it gonna take? Oh, and Miss Gertie is jealous, of course. We all know she's at the top of the herd. <laughs> <laughs> and go put it in a far corner. See if you can get his attention. Go get it, Flynn away from all the others. There you go, Flynn. Now, Yay. okay, way away from the others. He's gonna give it a try. Now I'm interested to see if they'll let Flynn with, eat that flake or if somebody will go in and take it away from him. Okay. So everybody can see it's really fairly obvious. Okay, let's, let's have Anya and Alana and Ashley talk about who's head horse and go all the way down, okay? Yeah, I would say Monty is the head horse for sure. Sometimes I refer to the herd as a mob. He's the Don, he's the mob boss for sure. He's mm -hmm. the one calling the shots, running the show. And Whiskey is his right-hand man. That's his muscle. Absolutely. His, you know, his guy to his right-hand side, the one that's got him. And then everyone else kind of falls in in the middle. Rocket's up there um, at the top, you know, with Whiskey and Monty. They're usually the first ones that want to come in in the morning. And um, I agree. I think Rocket, the one with the orange tape. So let's make sure for our viewers we re right, right. reviewed tape. So blue, the one with the blue tape would be Monty. He's definitely our mob boss. He's our patriarch here. Followed by Whiskey, the one in the white tape. That's his right-hand man. And then we decided that Rocket, the one in the orange, is in third rank. So what about Alana? What do you think, based on what we saw here between the two black horses, Mr. in the pink ribbons and Butte in the green ribbon, what do we all think? I mean, I know I have some thoughts come about who to, I think. Uh, come close to Anya so people can hear you. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I probably think that Mystery probably is like the fourth one, and then Butte, because yeah. Mystery pushed him around a little bit. Butte didn't really try to push him around. Absolutely. I think they had some back and forth here where Mystery tried to go in and tried to push Butte. And with them, I think it really depends on the day and also what other horses are around because I've seen it go both ways with them. And it's like Suzanne said earlier, these two horses are not quite secure in their position in the herd yet. So they're still figuring it out. And some days one might dominate the other and vice versa. So the, the horse that probably expanded the least amount of energy is which horse? Flynn. 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 So that's an advantage. I mean, that's a huge advantage. If you have a herd that is malnourished and, and on the edge, 
Knowing you're at the bottom of the totem pole can be a big advantage to you because you're not expending energy like Whiskey is right now, putting his ears back and telling Butte, to, uh, the, the green horse, to move along. Now, notice how Flynn noticed that action. So now we have some, you know, some movement going on here. Some displaced movement. Displaced movement. And, and Finn, Flynn tried to, he saw Butte coming and he tried to eat as fast as possible to get a couple yep. of mouthfuls in. Trying to get Doug, and now Flynn is kind of just sneaking in where he can, a bite here, a bite there. He's very cautious but, of Whiskey right there. He's got mm -hmm. his eye and his ear on Whiskey mm -hmm. standing yep. by the water, Whiskey with the white on his neck. Yep. They're both so, aware that each other are there. And I also think now, so it was the black horse with the green ribbons that approached Flynn in the yellow. Flynn stayed by the hay until the last possible minute. I would venture to say that it ha if it had been Monty or Whiskey, so either the blue or the white ribbon, Flynn would have gotten the heck out of Dodge a lot sooner yeah. because they're the more dominant that he's more intimidated by. Whereas it was one of, kind of the horses kind of in the middle, so he wasn't quite as intimidated and he took a chance grabbing some extra hay before moving along. Now, what's interesting here is yeah, there's enough hay for everybody, but there's still movement. And so mm -hmm. this is in particularly by the guys in the middle. You notice that the, the uh, Flynn only moves when he's pushed. Yep. Only moves when he's pushed. He's, he would be happy to stay at the same flake and do nothing but eat. Okay? And Monty's pretty, you know, he had one little foray. But basically, he's interested in just eating. Whereas these guys in the middle are much more want to push around. They're the ones who are striving for a leadership role. So I wanted to return to Mickey. Uh, Mickey was always the striver. He was the one who would consistently, every time we did this, he would push horses off of other uh, hay and never eat. He wouldn't eat at all. He would do nothing but push other horses away. And you know, you could call him a bully. And in fact, we, we very commonly, um, Use that term for, for Mickey. But you know, every horse teaches you something. And if you can put that sort of aggressive, aggressive energy to good work, Mickey was a fabulous competitor. He was a state champion walking horse. He liked being the center of attention. He demanded to be center of attention. And when you used him in that way, he excelled. Mm -hmm. And I think it really tells you something about how to use these horses in different ways and what their appropriate role might be uh, in, in the ranch. So why don't you address that, Ashley? You've done a lot in terms of putting horses in order down the trail. Definitely. Um, we try to keep our more calm horses that behave better with one another kind of towards the middle or towards the back. They're happy with just being a follower. They're happy with just being part of the string, going down the line. Um, with our guide horses, Mystery in the Pink and also Chinook, the horse that I've been riding, it's really interesting because as you can see here, Mystery in the Pink is a middle of the pack kind of horse. He's secure in some ways and insecure in others. And I'm sure Anya can explain better, but when he's out on the trail, I mean, he's confident with the rider on his back. He knows right. what his job is. He wants to go down the trail. And Chinook is the same kind of way but when he, Chinook is out in the pasture, he's at the bottom of the barrel. He's the bottom horse. He is much like Flynn, except even farther away from the other horses. He wants nothing to do with what's going on with the rest of the group. But once I'm on his back, I can ride up next to any of the other horses and he is perfectly fine. In fact, some of the other horses move away from him because I think they feel my energy coming by, um, being like, I need to fix something, I need to do this, I need to do that. But they're not moving, you know, it's very him. much dependent on the rider. If you put a different horse on Chinook, they would not move away. Mm -hmm. And uh, interestingly enough, the horses all know the people and have the same sense of hierarchy with the people. And part of, uh, if you've been with us for any amount of time, you've watched Brandon work with both Anya and Ashley. And what is it that the basic training of a horse is teaching it to move mm -hmm. when you want it to move. And you can see what the real lesson is there. You're saying, I'm the dominant being. You are the submissive being. We have a herd of two, and in this situation, I'm the dominant one. 
And that translates to when you're on their back and when you're on one horse's back and going by another horse. And to add to that, it's not also, it's not just about getting them to move. It can also be about getting them to follow you as well. Brandon yes. does a lot of that where you do a lot of training with the horse. You kind of bring them down, calm them down. And then you have them kind of follow you around like a dog because right. in that herd of two, you become the leader and they just follow you around just to see where you're gonna go, what you wanna do. And so there's, you know, there's days in the afternoon here, we'll get ready to let the horses go out and I, I lead the herd, I walk them all the way down to the pasture and they follow behind me or come back in in the morning following behind because they know who the leader is, who's gonna bring them to their food. And uh, those of you who've been with us for many years will notice that when we open the gate to, for our horses to go down to the riparian, there's a really good reason Monty's the leader. He'll go first. Mm -hmm. And what horses want is the horse that will make themselves vulnerable to predators. They know if, Mo if Monty goes, it's safe to go. And yet Mickey would never lead the way. Mickey never once led the way when he was he uh, with us. And yet he was always bullying the other horses around, but the other horses would not follow him. No matter how big a bully he was, the other horses wouldn't follow because he would not make himself vulnerable. And that's very much like people. People will follow leaders that they trust, that they know will take the heat for them. If you have a boss that will have your back, for example, you'll do a lot more for that boss than one who doesn't have your back. And it's exactly the same in the horse herd. So I'm gonna take a look at my cell phone to see if we have any questions and what viewers thought of this. I'll have to step back into the, into the shadow to, to, to look. So Anya and uh, Ashley, were any of you surprised by what happened here today? I wasn't. I mean, I've seen it every day while feeding them. They do the same dance, the same, call it the Dunrovin Ballet, of all the horses moving each other around when we throw the flakes out in the pasture. Um, anytime I lead the cart through with the hay, it's usually one or two horses right there behind me the whole time. Mm -hmm. Monty's got to follow with the blue ribbons. Whiskey's got to follow with the white ribbons. Um, and then usually Augie, who thinks he knows things, gets to follow me too, but he's just following me, not the hay. <laughs> but it's an everyday kind of thing. They're constantly moving each other around um, to establish their hierarchy and you know continue living that way every day. Yeah, absolutely. And one other thing, in the mornings when we bring the horses in, so my routine is I go around and I put their feed, their grain and their hay in all the stalls. And then while I'm doing that, the horses come in from the pasture and they line up at the gate because they're ready to come in for breakfast. And it's very interesting because they will line up at the gate in the same order that we saw here. Monty will be the one that's at the gate first and nobody else would dare to challenge him at the gate. So he gets to stand at the gate and he'll be the first one I let into his stall. So he's the first one that gets to come into and grain. Right hand man is right there, Whiskey, yep, right behind absolutely. him. Absolutely. <laughs> so Whiskey will be right behind him and then next they're always Rocket and Mystery. They're right there. And then shortly after that, Butte's kind of in that space as well. Mm -hmm. um, Lady Lanza and Augie will usually be there, next. Yes. Having a mare in the herd kind of it changes the hierarchy a bit because mares can be more dominant, they can be more assertive, they can be a bit more aggressive, especially if they have a foal or something that they need to watch after. Um, a lot of wild herds are actually led by the maid, the matriarch, the, the mm -hmm. mare, because they are the ones that are doing all of the protecting. So she is up there. Um, however, she does not challenge Monty. No. Nope. They, they have gotten into it with each other, but they know their boundaries with one another of not to mess with. Um, so you'll see Lady Lanza and her colt Augie will usually follow pretty close to the front, um, but they know that they're not in the top four, I would say. Absolutely. Yeah, mares in the wild uh, are always the one that tell the herd where the nutrition is and where the water is and all of that. When it, when it comes to protecting the herd, it's the stallions mm -hmm. that then are the ones who lead. But everyone thinks that the stallion is the one who actually uh, dictates migration, but it's not, it's, it's the mm -hmm. mares. I don't have any questions, I have a lot of conversation. And uh, what I will say is I'm gonna go to my office and get on the chat and I will be happy to chat with any of you who want to stay around and talk about it. Uh, I hope you learned something from this. We certainly love doing this because it really is a very demonstrative way of illustrating a herd hierarchy and 
Why it's important. You know, once everybody's figured it out, everybody can eat in peace. Mm -hmm. And that's, mm -hmm. you know, the, the more a herd, uh, uh, an animal knows where its location in the herd is, the less energy it is expending. And let me say that when we get a new horse, we have a, a way of integrating them into the herd. And we do that by uh, a, a whole series of events. We put the horse by itself in every pasture that it will be located. So it knows where the water is located, where the fences and the gates are located, so it feels comfortable by itself. And then we'll pick um, a good lead horse to partner with. And believe it or not, one of our best is Uncle Monty, uh, the one that's dominant here. And uh, I don't know if you've noticed, but Monty is able to lead without over-aggression. He is able to lead just by flicking his ears or, or snaking out a little bit. He doesn't get overly aggressive. And he does that with a new horse. He lets the horse know, but then he'll buddy up. He's not standoffish. And so then you start adding other horses uh, little by little. And then when you've got about half the herd integrated with that one horse, you bring them all together because now he has a few buddies he can go hide behind. And that's what we've done with every horse that we've brought in. And in the wild, that doesn't always work. Um, you know, people think that they can let a domestic horse go in with a herd of wild horses. And that does not work well for the domestic horse. They often are, are, are injured and, and made to understand that they're not welcome. Uh, you know, this is part of their survival mechanism, is knowing the herd out here and staying together and protecting their herd against others. So it's an important facet of horse life. And you know that's another reason we run them as a herd. Because it's so important, horses that are kept alone are, feel a great deal of social anxiety. And uh, in some countries like Germany, it's illegal to have a single horse because they are so social. But it's that social nature that allows us to domesticate them. They look for leadership and we can provide it and they'll let us provide that leadership. So thank you all for joining us. I hope you'll stay uh, later in the day. McKinsey will be here this evening uh, to be playing with his lovely friends, the Divas, at 6.30. And then we have some more things uh, on the schedule for this week. We're going to be uh, going with Beyonder on Wednesday to Portugal. And then on Thursday, Cherie and I are going to get on uh, again and talk about the Ospreys. So we have lots. And what is your... Tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. I'll be talking about what's going on this week at the ranch. So don't give away too many spoilers, Suzanne. That's All my right. job. All <laughs> right. And then James does his uh, sunrise tour at 7 on Wednesdays, I believe. Very good. Well, thank you all for joining us. We sure appreciate your being here. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Bye.